Greetings, I'm Zachary Hepner. I'm pleased to share this Devar Torah with you for Parshat Vayishlach. When Esau kisses Jacob, Rashi famously quotes the Sifrei Bamidbar. Amar Rabbi Shimon Bar Yechai, Halacha hi biyadua she'esav sone le'yakov, ela she'nechmi ruachamav be'ota sha'a l'nishakob b'chol libo. Rabbi Shimon ben Yochai says, it is not well known that Esau hated Jacob, but at that moment, his pity was really aroused, and he kissed him with his whole heart. The word halacha is problematic because it is usually used in the context of a decisive legal decision. And what does that mean philosophically? The simplest explanation is that there are other versions of that sifre that omit the word. While the simplest explanation is often the correct explanation, I would like to make the following suggestion. Joshua Berman has eloquently argued in Animamin, Biblical Criticism, Historical Truth, and the 13 Principles of Faith, that while the world society has shifted from a common law world to a statutory law society, Judaism too started out as a common law religion with general guidelines that we call the Torah, Torah Shebaal Peh, is very conducive to common law approaches. The shift to statutory law, Berman claims, was the Shulchan Aruch in the 16th century. Personally, I feel that Rambam might have been the real culprit creating this cosmic shift. To put this into perspective, Rambam helped turn Torah Shebaal Peh into a form of Torah Shebichtav, something that was not done even with the creation of the Talmud, or even the riffs riff on the Talmud. With that model, halacha today means a decisive ruling, but the word in a more common law society means something different, that the nature of philosophy should shift. Don't focus on why Esau hates Jacob, rather focus on what you are going to do about it. Not halacha, that Esav must hate Jacob, but rather, with the information we have, what are we going to do about it? This word shifts the conversation and changes the topic. Rashbi, Rabbi Shima Bayechai, was taking this common knowledge and using it to explain the strange dots on top of the word Vayishakehu, and used it exegetically. To conclude, the Svat Emet quotes his father and observes that Yaakov's image is carved on the heavenly throne, representing the struggle with Esav above and Esav below. To me, this means that Jacob is as close as you get to someone who struggles and struggles with theodicy and prevails. I conclude that trust that the Almighty will get you through every narrow challenge. This trust is not the answer to theodicy, but halacha. It is the exercise that one must do when dealing with theodicy. Wishing you all a Shabbat Shalom.